In this video, what we are going to be looking at is the uh, human heart. And we are just going to see a simplified structure of the human heart because the actual human heart, when you look at the internal structure, is much more complicated. But for the purpose of this video, I've decided to keep it as simplified as possible because we just have to see the important parts within the heart uh, and we have to understand their basic fundamental structures. So the human heart itself, the first thing that we have to understand is it is actually divided into two sides, which are the left and right side. Now, remember, the when you're labeling the left and right side of the heart, it is actually flipped. So in my diagram over here, right becomes left and left becomes right. The reason is because when you look at the human body, when you look at a person's, uh, when, you, when you compare the person's body over there, you can see that, that the highlighted part in yellow is the left part of the body, uh, the yellow color highlighted parts, and the pink color highlighted area is the right side of the body. That is why the left and right portions are actually flipped when you're looking at it. So it's like looking at a mirror image, technically. So in this case, what actually happens is we have to know that the two sides of the heart are separated by something known as the septum, which is a muscular wall. And the function of the septum is just to prevent the blood from the right side and the blood from the left side from uh, mixing with each other. Next thing we have to know about the heart is the heart has four chambers or four rooms. And the four chambers are known as the left and right atria and also the left and right ventricles. Um, some students will notice, hey, wait, I came across this word atrium. Uh, so which is it? Is it atria or atrium? Atrium is singular and atria are plural. So when you want to just call it by itself, left atrium or right atrium, but when you're calling it together, when you're grouping it together, we can just say left and right atria. So um, in my diagram, as you can see that I am labeling it as LA, L, left, L is for left atrium, LV is for left ventricle, RA is for right atrium, and RV is for right ventricle. In the exam, you cannot shorten it, yeah? So if you want to actually put it uh, when you are writing it out, please write out the whole and uh, the whole word. Uh, you have to write it out fully. You have to say left atrium or left ventricle. You cannot put the shortened acronym LA or LV. That is not accepted in the exam. I've just written it over there for our purpose of uh, simplification. Now, uh, also notice that LA and LV, I have written it in red color, and RA and RV, I've written it in blue color. There is a reason for that. Uh, I will explain that one later too. So uh, another thing that we also have to know is the heart is actually made up of cardiac muscles, which, I've, which I have highlighted in yellow. And the cardiac muscles are actually quite different from the skeletal muscles in our body, which are muscles attached to your bones, or the smooth muscles in the body, where you can find in your blood vessels or intestine. The cardiac muscles have a rather interesting quality, which is known as myogenic. And I will describe this characteristic in a different video. For now, all we just have to know is the heart is made out of a special type of muscle known as cardiac muscles. You do not have to know the structure of the cardiac muscles in detail. That is a bit too much if we were to actually dive into it. And the thickness of the muscles are also quite important. So as you notice, I've drawn out the chambers and I've also put circles on each of the walls. You can see the left atrium wall is circled with the green color, right atrium wall right ventricle and the left ventricle wall as well. Now, looking at the diagram, which wall is the thickest? The thickest, the thickest wall is actually the left ventricle wall, followed by the right ventricle wall, which has a medium thickness, and the thinnest wall are the atria walls, right atrium and left atrium. Both of them have very thin walls. There is a reason why the wall thickness is as such. We will talk about that part later too. 
Let's just go through the structure first. The explanation part will come later in the video. Another very important thing to also know about the heart is they have valves. Now, we have seen valves with uh, the blood vessels, veins in particular, and uh, the valves here have the same function because they prevent backflow. You see, under normal circumstances, blood has to flow from the atria to the ventricles on both sides, which I've represented in the arrows. And between the atrium and ventricles, there are valves, which are known as the atrioventricular valves. Uh, and I've labeled in, I, I've highlighted in yellow, the left atrioventricular valve and the right atrioventricular valve. The function of those valves are to make sure that the blood does not flow from the ventricles back into the atrium. So that's what it does. It makes sure that the blood only flows from the atria to ventricles. All right. And after the blood flows into the ventricles, what needs to happen is they need to flow into the arteries, which I've represented in the arrows. As you can see there, one arrow is going outwards from the ventricle, okay, into that artery, and another one in red color. Um, and that's how the blood is supposed to flow out. So to make sure that the blood only flows in one direction, we have the semilunar valves, which I have uh, highlighted in green. So the function of the atrioventricular valves is to prevent the backflow from ventricles to atria. And the function of the semilunar valves is to prevent the backflow from arteries to ventricles. So with the presence of these two groups of valves, deoxygenated blood, which I have represented in blue color, they will flow into the right atrium, into the right ventricle, and then flow out of the heart. And for the oxygenated blood, which I've represented in the red color arrows, they will flow into the left atrium, left ventricle, and out of the heart. All the blood flows in one way because the valves are there to ensure that there is no backflow happening. Other important things that we also have to know about the heart is there are blood vessels connected to the heart. Well, obviously, because if you remember, we studied the three types of blood vessels, arteries, veins, and capillaries. Let's just focus on veins and arteries. If you remember in the previous video, veins are blood vessels that transport blood back to the heart and arteries are blood vessels that transport blood away from the heart. So vein is the one where you can see the blood going into the heart and artery is the one where blood is going out of the heart. Again, I've just labeled it over that because that's how the blood is supposed to flow into and out of the heart. But these veins and arteries actually have special names and the special names are as follows. Pulmonary vein from the lungs aorta to the rest of the body, vena cava from the rest of the body, and pulmonary artery, which is blood vessels transporting blood to the lungs. Or the word pulmonary in this case is derived from Latin, which means lungs. So pulmonary artery just means an artery that transports blood to the lungs, and pulmonary vein is the blood vessels that transport blood from the lungs to the heart. That is essentially what that means. The next thing we must know is we must also talk about that weird lines which are located in the atrioventricular valves. And those lines are referred to as something called chordae tendinae. Sounds like a very fancy name, but you don't have to remember that special name. All you can just call it is tendon. They are a very special type of connective tissue and they are attached in a way where they are attached to the atrioventricular valves and the ventricle wall. Now, the, the function of these tendons is to prevent the valves from, from folding inside out. Now, what do I mean by that? You see, under normal circumstances, what happens is deoxygenated blood flows into the right atrium and oxygenated blood flows into the left atrium. Deoxygenated, deoxygenated blood I've represented in blue and the oxygenated blood in red. And from the atrium, they will then fill up the ventricles, as we have discussed earlier. And from the ventricles, where they're supposed to go is, they're supposed to go out of the heart. Now, sometimes what may happen is, if the heart does not function normally, 
backflow may happen. And backflow here means that from the ventricles, they flow back into the atria. Do we want this to happen? No, this is something that we do not want to happen because this can be dangerous. So to prevent the backflow, obviously, what happens then? The atrioventricular valves will actually close. So that's a normal thing, and this ensures that the blood will flow up towards in one direction. So that's fine. But the question is, what do the tendons actually do? Imagine if the tendons were not there to attach itself to the atrioventricular valves. What will happen then is the atrioventricular valves, just like clothes in the wind, they will start flapping. And when they start flapping, they will actually fold inwards or they'll fold inside out. Look at what happens to the valves. There's nothing attaching to it. So the valves just fold inside out and that is dangerous. We don't want that to happen because when the valves fold inside out, look at what happens to the blood. They might flow backwards into the atria. So this can be quite dangerous. So with the presence of the uh, tendons, the tendons will ensure that the valves remain in place. And when they close, they just cup into each other and form a perfect fit. And they will not flap backwards and cause the valves to flow, to fold inside out. That is just essentially the function of the tendons. Now, we also have to talk a little bit about the muscle wall. If you remember, I'm just highlighting all the muscle walls. If you remember, I told you that the atrial walls, which I've highlighted in yellow, I hope you can see that, the atrial walls are the thinnest walls. The reason why the atrial walls have to be the thinnest is because the muscles, they will just have to generate enough pressure to push the blood into the ventricles. Um, so they generate sufficient pressure to push blood into the ventricles. And look, the distance between the atrium and ventricle is quite short. So the muscles in the atrium do not have to contract very much. They just have to give enough pressure to push the blood into the ventricles, which is not far away. However, when we look at the ventricle walls, I have highlighted the left ventricle wall in orange and the right ventricle wall in green. Remember, which wall is thicker between the two? You're right. The left ventricle wall is the thickest and the right ventricle wall has a medium thickness. And of course, the atrial wall is the thinnest. If you remember, the left ventricle is supposed to push the blood into the aorta, which goes to the rest of the body. And the right ventricle wall has to generate pressure to push blood into the pulmonary artery, which transports the blood to the lungs. So logically, the right ventricle just has to generate enough pressure to push the blood to the lungs. And the blood, the heart and the lungs are not so far away. So that is why the wall of the right ventricle does not have to be so thick. It has to be thicker than the atrial walls, definitely, but it does not have to be extremely thick because the pressure is just needed to push the blood from the right ventricle from the right ventricle to the lungs. Not much of a great distance. However, from the left ventricle, it has to generate pressure to push blood to the brain, to the liver, to the intestines, hands and feet, and other parts of the body. So therefore, it, the wall needs to be thick so it can generate the most amount of pressure to push blood to the rest of the body because it is of a greater distance from the heart. That is why different walls in the heart, the atrial walls, the left ventricle wall, and the right ventricle wall, they all have different thicknesses. It just corresponds to the amount of pressure they need to generate. Atrial walls are the thinnest because they just need to generate very little pressure to push blood from the atria to the ventricles. Right ventricle walls have to be thicker because they need to push blood to the lungs. And the left ventricle wall has to be the thickest because it has to generate the most pressure to push blood to the rest of the body, which are at a greater distance from the heart. That's basically what we have to know about the structure of the heart for now.